The Nissan Leaf E Plus has been a fixture in the long-term garage at car sales for some time now, and the verdict is in. Let's take a closer look. Launched in April 2021, two years after the second generation LEAF on which it's based, the 2021 Nissan LEAF E Plus is the new flagship variant in the two model EV range. At $10,000 more than the standard LEAF, the LEAF E Plus has a larger battery and longer range, but costs more than $60,000 before government incentives. The LEAF may be a dedicated EV, but its exterior design is straight from the mainstream five door hatch playbook albeit with a field-in grill, some blue details, and a zero emissions badge at the back hinting of its green credentials. LED daytime running lights, front and rear fog lights, privacy glass, a rear spoiler and chrome door handles are standard. 17-inch alloys are a duly sensible choice. The LEAF E Plus runs a 62 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery, which is quite a jump over the standard model's 40 kilowatt hour battery. With 115 kilometres of extra range, this model will now tackle most suburban drivers' weekly commute on one charge. And with it much more respectable performance outputs, its 0 to 100 kilometres per hour time isn't bad either. The hurdles, perceived or otherwise, are coming down. Speaking of which, while a full charge at home via a standard 10 amp power outlet will take about 32 hours, Charging from 0 to 100% via a 50 kilowatt hour DC fast charger takes less than two hours. Our time behind the wheel of the LEAF E Plus suggests a real world range of 310 to 350 kilometres, taking into account a variety of driving styles, combined city and freeway kilometres, and the use of climate control when needed. We saw charging times between two hours on a 100 kilowatt fast charger and a day and a half via a domestic power outlet. The Leaf E Plus measures 4.5 metres long and weighs in at 1736 kilograms, making it around the same size as a Toyota Corolla, but a lot heavier. And a single reduction gear sends all power to the front wheels. The Leaf's interior design is generations behind the competition. You think about Tesla Model 3, for example, chalk and cheese. This is neither innovative nor entertaining. A foot operated park brake and lack of reach adjust on the steering wheel are early gripes that linger with every drive. Heated leather seats and steering wheel soften the blow. On paper, the Leaf's technology and infotainment is satisfactory. It's more so this user interface and the design execution that lets it down a little bit. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, satellite navigation, digital radio and a 7-speaker Bose sound system function through an 8-inch colour touchscreen that lacks the finesse and functionality we rightfully expect for this level of coin. Safety technology, on the other hand, is good with all the basics covered. In fitting with its no-frills demeanour, the Leaf is high on practicality. Cup holders, multiple storage spots and charge points, sorted. It's ergonomically friendly and a very easy cabin to settle into. You quickly become accustomed to any shortfalls in tech, to be honest. That's how comfortable it is. Second row passengers are met with both comfort and space, but amenity is hit and miss. A heated bench seat, back of seat pockets, two charge outlets are good, but there are no cup holders or directional air vents. You'll find two isofix positions and three top tether anchors. The boots are decent size and 60-40 split-fold seats add to this car's overall versatility. Okay, behind the wheel, the first thing I try and do is lower my seat, but this is as low as it goes. This high perch driving position is not ideal, but maybe I'll warm to it. Instant torque is the headline of any EV and it's no different in the seemingly meek and mild Leaf E+. Likewise, engine braking levels vary depending on which drive mode you choose. B, brake mode, ups the regenerative braking for more efficient driving, but switch to Nissan's e-pedal mode for as close as one pedal driving as you can get. Lift off the accelerator and you pull to a stop. It's a learned way of driving that adds fuel to the naysayers bandwagon, but is very user-friendly once you get used to it. Let's be honest, the LEAF is not the most dynamic looking vehicle, so it may come as a surprise to know that it actually handles pretty well. This is certainly no driver's car, but feel at the wheel and ride comfort are more than acceptable, making it very easy to settle into the LEAF. 
and for its target market we have zero complaints where overall handling is concerned. The Leaf E Plus is not without its quirks though and this gear selector is one of them. It's definitely a learned thing and I can't say that I'm a huge fan. On the upside, comfort and space is fantastic and overall refinement is good. The cabin is lovely and quiet. There's something so incredibly normal about driving the Nissan Leaf E Plus, normal in a very good way. There's no confusing tech or gimmetry fanfare to speak of. And for many buyers who simply want to move to more efficient, zero emissions motoring, this is great news. Despite large rear pillars, the Leaf is also easy to park. A 360 degree camera, front and rear parking sensors and dynamic guidelines are welcome inclusions. The 2021 Nissan Leaf E Plus has a 5 year unlimited kilometre warranty and the battery 8 years or 160,000 kilometres. Service intervals are 12 months or 20,000 kilometres. The Leaf has a huge job of converting a market of buyers being dazzled by competitors with smarter looking silhouettes and technology to match for around the same price as the now seemingly dated Leaf. The nondescript Nissan Leaf E Plus simply gets on with the job at hand, and for that, we must give it praise. EVs are here to stay, but whether Nissan's pioneering Leaf EV Plus can keep up with the best of them remains to be seen.